Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. Today is January 4th, 2020, and my name is Lysander Xanthus. Today I'll be sharing with you today's astrology, numerology, and some other uh, information for you to use in your day ahead. Uh, so, happy belated new year to anyone I haven't yet said it to. I like to begin each morning with a little clearing and a blessing. I like to use this singing bowl here to clear energy. The sound kind of as a way of melting away uh, unwanted energy. I'm going to be using this selenite crystal to send you healing, peaceful energy. I bless you, and I bless your day ahead. I bless you that you may find healing today. And the answers you seek. I bless you that all energy that doesn't belong to you falls away so your own voice can be heard. I bless you that you gain clarity today and find greater self-love. I bless your day ahead, that your path be clear, that everyone is helpful today, and that today is filled with good experiences and good company. Be blessed. Now I would like to share with you the astrology for today. So, the Sun, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, and Pluto are in Capricorn. Um, so there is a huge emphasis emphasis on Capricorn qualities. Uh, we are being encouraged to become the leaders of our own lives, to organize ourselves, and um, kind of like a, what's the word, like information or insights mm -hmm. about yourself. Yes. <laughs> In order to make a uh, decision for yourself of uh, what direction you want to go. Uh, where you want to end up, and uh, to start moving yourself there. Uh, these planets in this sign encourage us to exercise our self-sufficiency, practicality, problem-solving, and independence, and that it is through these qualities that we uh, create new opportunities for ourselves or become open to them, and that we create transformation in ourselves and in our lives. Um, 
we can't wait on the other people in our lives or the situation to change. We must decide that we want something different and things have a way of unfolding in that vein. Uh, they aren't going to change, so you must be the one. Uh, Mars has just left Scorpio, so Mars is now in Sagittarius. So our sense of initiative and all of our energy and passion, this kind of a, an expansiveness um, that's entering into it, kind of like the idea of being open to possibility and having the drive and initiative to explore different things and to discover different things. Venus is in Aquarius, so we are feeling a bit more independent when it comes to our relationships and love life at this time. There's a greater emphasis on our sense of greater community rather than one-on-one -on -one relationships. And we may also be seeking new and different ways to be with other people in this time. Neptune is in Pisces, so our own deeper intuition is more active during this period and more of these intuitions are rising to our conscious awareness. It is up to us, however, if and how we'd like to use that information and those feelings. Um, Uranus is in Taurus, in retrograde. So we continue to reassess our comfort zones and our habits, and now is a good time to make radical changes in either those things and allow those changes to take a deeper root in our consciousness rather than those old habits. Finally, the moon is waxing in Aries and it is over half illumination. So our attention is more outward and from within ourselves there is a newfound initiative and we ha may have a lot of energy at this time. Uh, it is up to us to direct that energy rather than just having it. Uh, that concludes the astrology for today. So now the numerology of the day. Today is a four day. A four vibration is solid, responsible, and seeks security. I definitely think it think of it as the foundation builder. This is a four day. It is a perfect day to get caught up on all of your bills. If you have let the housework go, this is also an, an ideal day to clean. Learn, try to learn something new. Pick up that book you've wanted to read. Whatever you do, avoid confrontations. People love to argue on a four day and it really is a waste of time. You are normally outspoken. Uh, think before you speak. You may regret what you say if you don't. So this is a day just to be mindful and to uh, finish up anything that we've been leaving undone for a while. Next, I would like to share a crystal healing with you. Um, and today's crystal, we are using red jasper, and this particular piece has quartz inclusions. That's what the white is. And I'm going to be telling you about the qualities of this crystal. Um, quartz, of course, is an amp amplifier and healer. So it adds those qualities to the jasper. Red jasper is known as a shaman stone. It gathers energy for brave and s practical strategic action. This type of jasper provides strength, courage, and determination. It is also extremely grounding and soothing as a base chakra stone. Um, light 
All Jasper is deeply nurturing. Um, this, it's referred to as the Supreme Nutri Nurturer, Stone of Courage, and Stone of Wisdom. Uh, it also unifies all aspects of your life, reminding people to help each other, absorbs negative in energy, and aligns the layers of your energy. And uh, it is a great stone to support you during times of stress. All right, but you are going to experience the energy of this crystal for yourself. So if you would like to participate in this healing, uh, just make yourself comfortable, breathe, and allow yourself to receive the energy and to connect with this stone. will begin. is directing me to different places. So right now we are giving nurturing and support to the back area. Our back represents the burdens we carry, how supported we feel in life, and our strength. Love is in the earth, and each crystal expresses a little of earth's love. So allow earth to nurture you right now. is your best self, which includes the you that is healthy, whole, and complete. The spine wants to be aligned. It's like a river. Now I'm drawn to the pelvis. Many of our feelings can be buried here. The Jasper wants to send you feelings of safety, security, and being nurtured here. You are safe. It is safe to move forward in your life.
across the forehead. Soothing the mind. the chest, soothing the emotions, the emotions caught in the heart, the chest, the lungs. It's almost this biting quality I sense in someone like choking back one's sobs. Release the tension you are holding in your shoulders and in your chest and let it out in a sigh. It's okay. I go down the torso. down each leg letting you know it's safe to move forward and it is timely to do so Open the left hand to clear it so that it is open to receive. Now down the right arm. And I open the right hand to help you create. the whole of the energy body. concludes the crystal healing with red jasper with quartz and greens. And to finish this crystal healing, I send you a little incense. This is a good fortune incense. I wrap it around you. Breathe it in. Allow its good naturedness to fill in all your spaces. Around me, please. Thank you. That is nice. Our last one, too. 
Let me get this incense in Chinatown. My goodness. I'm going to have to beg my brother to go to Chinatown and get into it. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let us sit in the energy we have received for a moment. Hello, Patty, and welcome as always. Mm. Well, good morning. That was a very in-depth healing you know, received just now. It was fantastic. Or was it? I'm glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was... I knew the Jasper was the right thing for the, the day today. I think so. Uh, we will move into our affirmation for the day while we are in this energetic space. Okay. So this affirmation comes from the book, Heal Your Body. I know it says on the screen, but this is what the book looks like. Um, this affirmation is the one listed for allergies. However, uh, everyone can benefit from this affirmation. Um, I, we've decided to go through common ailments mm -hmm. and the affirmations associated to them. So I would like to say this affirmation to you the first few times in first person and second person, because I want you to really focus on listening to the words and taking them in uh, rather than being preoccupied with saying them at first. But we will say them together also a few times at the end. The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. The world is safe and friendly. You are safe. You are at peace with life. The world is safe and friendly. You are safe. You are at peace with life. Thank you for the feedback. Now, we are going to say the affirmation together three The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. Sit with those words. Well, that's a very interesting point, Iris. She says, it's got a bunch of resistance coming up to those. It explains the allergies. I have the same problem, Iris. Uh, I've had a lot of experiences in life that uh, have taught me that the world is not safe and not friendly. But as we talk about often on the show, it's all about the way that we choose to perceive the world. The universe wants to give us what we want. And if we see the world as dangerous, then the world will be more dangerous. So I have found this affirmation actually is very helpful when I have allergies. I have a cup of tea and I sit with my mala and I repeat this one to myself and it makes a tremendous difference. So 
I highly recommend you save this one if you felt that resistance, because you may need it. Indeed. Um, again, uh, we wanted to go through the common ailments listed in this book, so figured that at least a few people out there would find them relatable. I thought I would share what is listed as the cause behind allergies, since it has come up. It's, it asks, who are you allergic to? It's always an interesting one. Who are you allergic to? And denying your own power. And a great thing about affirmations is, like Iris said, a bunch of resistance came up for her. It makes it very clear where one's areas for healing are. Now that concludes the affirmation for today. Beautiful. And yes. Well said. Uh, there's a comment earlier from Joe Haran. Uh, I am so glad. Oh yeah. Not sure what is going on with her. Earlier, but earlier in the in the comments, Joe was explaining that. Uh, I will um, go up was explaining that she was just going to be listening today because she's taking care of her baby. And she said puppy. Mm. And she said doggo. Um, who, who recently had a procedure done. So I think it's fantastic that the person feeling is able to help with that as well. So I am glad. Very happy to hear that we're a big fan of bird children in this house. Yes. Indeed. So uh, now we will be doing our card reading for the day. Hashtag more cats. Oh. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Over it. Be careful over it. So, so but first, some cats. But first, hashtag more cats. Say good morning to everyone at Rush Go home here. She's like, I um, was dragged out of the front window just for just for this. She's yes. like, sweetheart. She's like, why are you doing that? Because the people want to see hashtag my cat. Well, I hope that pets make it better. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. What deck are we gonna be reading with today? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like So I will be doing a reading for all of you uh, to give you guidance and insight into your day ahead. Uh, you may find that some of the, reson the reading resonates with you, or all of it does. That one's going to come over here. It'll be good. I think we're good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hashtag more cats all day, every day. All day, every day. Hashtag more cats. <laughs> so today's reading comes to you from the Psychic Tarot Oracle deck. Hi. Hi. Hi, my cats. Now that I've decided to move on, we we'll both in here. That's okay. Just <laughs> keep going for now. <laughs> At least until the assault of the camera. I'm sure that they will. <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs> what do we have to say to everyone today? were smaller. I mean, I like the big pictures, but I have small hands.
to start with these cards. There are two cards today. And I feel as though each is a standalone thought. So I'm going to read the description from the book uh, because frequently uh, as you listen, parts of the passage or the entire passage will really stand out to you. And where appropriate, I do offer my own um, interpretation. So the first card is Obstacles and Challenges. That's very shiny, so I have to hold it sideways so you can see it. This card represents the obstacles, power struggles, and challenges that you must face in order to overcome them. This could be a difficult period to get through, but it's not impossible if you open your mind and see the bigger picture of how something went wrong. Don't get caught up in it. Just pause and stand back for clarity. Observe where adjustments are required or which decisions may need to be changed to enable you to move forward in a positive direction. Life really is all about learning. Don't play the victim. Take the knowledge you've gained from this experience so that you can apply it to similar situations in the future. This card often comes forth when competition is around you, whether it's in your personal or business life. This is an excellent time to think creatively and ask yourself, how can I make myself shine above all the rest? card is fulfillment of wishes and again its own thought. This card being one if not the most positive of the minor arcana cards represents emotional satisfaction, contentment, and enjoyment. Your wishes are coming true. Are you ready? Happiness, success, good health, completion, and accomplishment of your dreams and goals are in the palm of your hand. This card acts as a reminder to hold on to the beneficial feelings from accepting and receiving what you've asked for uh, or strived for. Know that these will assist you in the future when you may need inspiration and positive energy. This is the right time to heal those past memories that have been holding you hostage. Forgive others and yourself so that your wishes, desires, and goals have a clear, unobstructed path to your heart, soul, and life. back and see if there's anything else the cards would like to say. <laughs> All right, on a completely different vein. Well, how about that? This is a lot. I, I have a pile of cards over here. Okay. okay. You should stop shuffling after every thought anyways. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know why you like to do that. So, you'll never get anything said at that point. That's how I'm used to reading for myself. <laughs> you have to take the time to talk about each each individual thought. That is true. All right, so this next, next three cards are their own thought altogether. The first card is heartache and loss. Not to get all serious on you guys, but <laughs> it does have good things to say. 
The meaning of this card revolves around disappointment, sorrow, and separation, which can cause upheaval and distress. It takes all the strength you have at this moment in order to move past the pain and heal your heart. The love that has been given to another should now be focused on you. Although you might look at this card as being negative, it can act as a tremendous catalyst, encouraging you to move on. The painful experiences of life can be just as valuable as the joyous ones. You may not appreciate that sentiment at this challenging time, but life does have a way of pushing you forward, even though you may not always know the final destination. As you endure this period, learn not to dwell on the past, but use your strong mental control to deal with your emotions. Have faith in knowing that you will get through this. The card following this is suffering in silence. Are you finally ready to let go of those limiting negative beliefs? Or are you allowing the issues in your life to become bigger than they really are? Your mind has been doing quite a job on you lately, and even your dreams may be trying to get your attention. When you learn to let go of the worry, despair, and sense of hopelessness, a positive new way or path will be shown to you. When your fears aren't confronted, your men mental anguish will continue. This is a reminder to take action and trust that your soul and the power of spirit will grasp you firmly by the hand and guide you. But you must take the first step toward healing and let go of the mental distress. Don't suffer in silence. Reach out for the help that's available. Following these two cards is Destiny. Good luck and fortune are now in your favor. A cycle of change, success, and growth is imminent. Life ebbs and flows in its natural journey, and the Destiny card signifies that good karma has come full circle. What you've sowed, you're about to reap. Open up your heart and accept and receive what you've earned. Opportunities, whether expected or unexpected, are knocking at your door. This is a time to allow your problems to be replaced by solutions. Believe in destiny as you learn to let go of old issues. You're being given the chance to understand the lessons and gain wisdom from the past, enabling you to move steadily forward in a positive direction. Holding on to a strong belief that you deserve to be happy and prosperous and have abundance in all areas of your life is the key. This confident mindset will show you that the impossible can indeed become the possible. With this card, take advantage of all opportunities. Act now, take responsibility for your actions, and enjoy the fact that destiny is presently in your favor. So altogether, these cards are pointing out that if you can let go of your fears and the heartache that has fallen upon you that it will make it easier for your life to flow start flowing in that good direction as it is natural for it to do but these other things do need to be addressed There is uh, one last set of cards, and the, this is a new thought as well, and this is a set of four. Uh, and then that will conclude our card reading for today. So the cards had a lot to say to you all today. I'm sure that some things were for some people and other parts were for others. So the first card in this set is victory and success. Good news is on the way. The qualities of this positive card are completion, victory, and success that often follow a difficult period. Many people around you are very proud to see how you triumphantly came through it. 
They respect you and may even attempt to follow your example. You've worked hard and devoted much effort to get to this point in your life where you've become wiser and have grown in so many ways. Always remember to stop and pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. Realize that if you came through this challenging time, you can achieve anything. I have the sense that it is important to remember to focus on the victory and success that you are reaching for. Keep your eye on the prize. Next is patience. This card signifies the need for patience, self-control, adjustment, moderation, and balance when dealing with others as well as yourself. This could be in the areas of how you think and work, how you handle school, recreation, and the people in your life, or the spiritual path that's set before you. The patient card reminds you to open your heart and mind and allow yourself to listen to other people's ideas, thoughts, and perspectives. You'll become more aware of the miracles around you as well as the ones that you have a hand in creating. In a way, this card's pretty straightforward to exercise patience. Fertility. Through this card, the manifestation of growth is on the horizon. You are the creator and the seeds that have been planted in the past, whether they were Happiness, comfort, abundance, prosperity, family, children, ideas, or even thoughts are now ready to give birth into your world. Be patient as you watch your seeds take root and grow. Nurture them as they become strong and healthy. Open yourself to the life force of the universe. I do feel, with the first three cards here, it is saying that you will succeed and be victorious. You need to remember and focus on that. It's important to be patient and plant the seeds and take time to build something excellent and that that will come to fruition and manifestation. Now the fourth card. Emotional withdrawal. This card represents moving away or withdrawing from a current situation in your life, whether it's an old love, a relationship, or leaving behind what was once familiar in search of new horizons or beginnings. On a physical level, it's easy to get caught up in the materialistic world, but it's just as important to retreat from the outside world to enable you to pause, reflect, and heal. Schedule some alone time so that you can commune with your soul and give the power of spirit the opportunity to restore your energy level, giving you the vitality to move forward in a positive direction. The number eight represents infinity, passion, control, and power. This is your time. Use this opportunity to tap into your heart and soul in order to find the courage and strength to continue your journey into that wonderful and undis undiscovered territory. So this is advice for well. <laughs> this is advice as well for what has come before. So along with keeping your eye on the prize, being patient and putting in the time to create something excellent and knowing that it will come to fruition in time. It's also saying that there's something in your life that must be stepped away from in order to enable all of this. So that is today's card reading. be moving into our food for thought part of the day. I will be sharing with you some hopefully inspiring reading from um, my current book. Well, not mine. I can't write it, but the book. Uh, so today's reading comes from The Powers Within You by Louise Hay. ahead to see 
We are beginning a new chapter called Change and Transition. Change is usually what we want the other person to do, isn't it? When I speak about the other person, I want to include the government, big business, the boss, or coworker, the internal revenue service, foreigners, the school, husband, wife, mother, father, children, etc. Anyone other than ourselves. We don't want to change, but we want everybody else to change so our lives will be different. And yet, of course, any changes that we are going to make at all have to come from within ourselves. Change means that we free ourselves from feelings of isolation, separation, loneliness, anger, fear, and pain. We create lives filled with wonderful peacefulness where we can relax and enjoy life as it comes to us where we know that everything will be all right. I like to use the premise that life is wonderful, all is perfect in my world, and I always move into greater good. In that way, it doesn't matter to me which direction my life takes, because I know it's going to be wonderful. Therefore, I can enjoy all sorts of situations and circumstances. Someone at one of my lectures kept going through a lot of turmoil and the word pain kept coming up in conversation. She asked if there's another word that she could use. I thought about the time I had smashed my finger by slamming a window, window on it. I knew that if I gave into the pain, I was going to go through a very difficult period. So when it happened, I started to do some mental work right away and referred to my fingers having a lot of sensation. By viewing what happened in that particular way, I think it helped to heal the finger much more quickly and to handle what could have been a very unpleasant experience. Sometimes if we can alter our thinking a little bit, we can completely change a situation. Can you think of change as an internal house cleaning? If you do a little bit at a time, it will eventually all get done. You don't have to do it all, however, before you begin to see results. If you change just a little bit, you'll begin to feel better soon. Uh, happy birthday, Linnell. Happy birthday. We'll have to pull together some cats for you. <laughs> I was at a talk and the speaker said something that made me think. He said, it's the new year, but you've got to realize that the new year is not going to change you. Just because it's a new year, it's not going to make any difference in your life. The only way there's going to be a change is if you are willing to go within and make the change. That's so true. People make many kinds of New Year's resolutions, but because they don't make any internal changes, the resolutions have a way of falling away quickly. I'm not going to smoke another cigarette, or whatever someone says. Right away, it's put in a negative phrase rather than one that will tell a subconscious mind what to do. In this situation, you could say instead, all desire for cigarettes has left me and I am free. Until we make the inner changes, until we are willing to do the mental work, nothing outside of us is going to change. Yet the inner changes can be so incredibly simple because the only thing we really need to change are our thoughts. What can you do for yourself this year that you didn't do last year that could be positive? Take a moment and think about this question. What would you like to let go of this year that you clung to so tightly last year? What would you like to change in your life? Are you willing to do it? What a timely reading. There's a lot of information available that will give you ideas once you are willing to change. The moment you are willing to change, it is remarkable how the universe begins to help you. It brings you what you need. 
It could be a book, a tape, a teacher, or even a friend making a passing remark that suddenly has deep meaning to you. Sometimes conditions will get worse before they get better, and that's okay because the process is beginning. The old threads are untangling, so flow with it. Don't panic and think it's not working. Just keep working with your affirmations and the new beliefs you're planting. Healing can be messy. Uh, whether it's in therapy or in some other type of work, often when you begin to work on yourself or on certain issues, you feel way, way worse at first. But you have to know that the effort is worthwhile and push through to the end and there really is an other side that is really fantastic. So don't quit if you do experience that. Making progress. Of course, from the moment you decide to make a change until you get the demonstration or like the manifestation of that change, there's a transitional period. You vacillate, vacillate, sorry, between the old and the new. You go back and forth between what was and what you would like to be or to have. It is a normal and natural process. Often I hear people saying, well, I know all this stuff. My answer is, are you doing it? Knowing what to do and doing it are two separate steps. It takes time until you are strong in the new and have gone the complete shift. Until then, you must be vigilant in your efforts to change. For instance, many people say their affirmations maybe three times and give up. Then they say that affirmations don't work or they're silly or whatever. We have to give ourselves time to practice to make the changes. Change requires action. As I said, it's what you do after you say your affirmations that counts the most. As you go through this transitional phase, remember to praise yourself for each small step forward that you make. If you beat yourself up for the step backward, then change becomes oppressive. Use all the tools available to you as you move from the old to the new. Assure your inner self that they are safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to go through the transitional process of change and growth. It's not going to happen immediately or in a day. And even when you do have epiphany moments, there's still a process. Change is a process, not a, an event. Bye, Patty. Okay, Iris says, so timely. I found that I often unlet go of things. I consciously release because I've discounted the addiction I have to the old pattern and what it fulfills for me. I'm trying out the notion of sacrificing the old, even if it's painful to pay for new and better things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is good. Frequently, change and releasing is a choice you have to make multiple times, not just once. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the thoughts of what you've let go do come back and you have to choose again to say that they're not relevant to your life anymore. And that uh, putting your energy into those thoughts doesn't really uh, create any change in what happened or um, help you in any way. Yeah. It, it is. It's very, very difficult. I've done that. I blew up my entire life for the chance to be healthier and stronger and more oh capable boy. and have the life that I wanted for myself. When I say blow up my life, I mean I lost almost everything. I lost friends and family and my home and it was pretty dramatic, but sometimes we have to be willing to do what is necessary for ourselves and for our growth and our betterment. And taking those losses is part of that journey. Change is painful. Boy, this makes me really want my copy of The Roadless Traveled. I keep saying we need to get a new one. Maybe I will just buy a new one because one of the things that talks about is um, the necessity of change, that exchange of uh, an old way of being and doing things for something else mm -hmm. and have the pain of adaptation.
Don't wait for us to look up this book, by the way. The Road Less Traveled was one of the, was a book I read pretty early on, like uh, when I was a teenager, and it definitely formed the foundation of my mindset and the way that I think. It's a life-changing book. I think that this is a good stopping point, and we will continue this chapter tomorrow. I may reread the prior paragraph, because I kind of stopped in an awkward spot. <sighs> so th do think about all the things that she asked and brought up. An important thing I would like to add is that we talked about change, transition, New Year's resolutions, and how change needs to come from within, and that it's a tricky thing. An important question to ask yourself, and this may sound strange, is you need to, the most important thing is to be honest with yourself and where you're at, but do you actually want help? Do you actually want to change? Do you actually want to heal? And this asks you to consider any benefit or that you receive from being in your current issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may not be like a straightforward kind of benefit. I'll explain in a moment. Or if uh, you're not willing to go through, you know, if you're just comfortable where you are. And it may seem strange to encourage people to not seek change, but if you're honest with yourself, then you can realize that the ways that you feel you should change are not truly your own desires. And so when you come to that desire on your own, it will be genuine mm -hmm. and the motivation will actually carry through the process. If you want to change, it's because you feel like something is wrong with you and probably because other people have expectations for you. And that doesn't really create change or the motivation. So you just frustrate yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm glad, Iris. Uh, that book is on my reading list for a group and so on. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah. a very important question. I can't tell you how many people I have mentored or talked to where I've told them all the hard work it's going to take to really achieve their spiritual or psychic goals. And I have to ask them, do you want to change your circumstances? Because the way you're living your life is the reason why you have no control over your abilities. And they're like, well, that sounds hard. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. And they stop talking to me. It's that question of, do you really want to change? Do you really want to apply yourself and do the hard work? There's kind of no magic solution, whether you're seeking emotional healing, psychological uh, changes, uh, seeking psychic ability in a way that's safe mm -hmm. <laughs> and disciplined, uh, as well as magical ability. It is work and requires discipline. It requires you to live a certain lifestyle. So either you're willing to do that or you're not, and it's okay if you're not. Yeah. But, you know, spare yourself the trouble and don't waste your time if you're not okay if you're not there's nothing wrong with being comfortable in the life that you're living but you need to be self-aware enough to know that you're benefiting from that yeah. lifestyle and that you are contented in that comfort zone. Yeah. I'm so glad you're finding the law of attraction planner helpful I just ordered my fiance she's never had it before either so this will be her first copy um, till Monday so she's very excited. I'm so glad that it's helpful. All right. Um, gosh, there's like one more thing. I'm trying to remember what it was I wanted to say. I made you a sandwich. Thank you. What do I, what was it? It was on topic of the reading. Hmm. making sure that you actually want to change. Oh, I was gonna talk about like, uh, I feel like sometimes it's not clear how we benefit from 
being stagnant or how we benefit from having our issues. I'm not going to go super into it, just kind of mention like a few examples of like why you may actually not want to change. <laughs> well, I don't want to lose my train of thought. Well, so finish your thought. Okay, so uh, for example, um, some of the benefits you can get out of unhealthy circumstances or habits is uh, attention, validation, um, especially attention from other people that you want attention from, uh, feeling like you have control or a sense of security, whether it's real or not, that's the benefit you get out of it. Um, getting what you want out of other people, so unfortunately a means of manipulation. Let's go to cat cam while I talk. There we go. So obviously being honest on this level is probably not going to be pleasant. So it's not straightforward positive benefits like, oh, it makes my life better. Not that kind of benefit you're deriving, more like something that you don't want to let go of as a benefit that you perceive as being worth living the, in this manner. But it's important to acknowledge these things because if you don't, then you will just never have the genuine motivation to actually change or let go of the patterns because you won't be ready to let go of the perceived benefit that you have from doing it. Cats. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Um, I, I'm really so happy for you, Iris. Uh, everyone else, we're talking about the Law of Attraction Planner. <laughs> I'm going to go to desk cam. <laughs> Uh, I actually have mine right next to me. I have the black cover, so it's not so flashy looking. <coughs> and it's really hard to see on this camera. But uh, They have a lot of very pretty, colorful covers, but it's really excellent. I'm sure that she will like it. There are like a zillion writing <coughs> prompts. <laughs> so I'm glad that you enjoyed filling it out. Excited. So, um, you're the only person I know who, who also has it, so I'm not going to make a group for it, but if you just want to message me about it, that's fine, or talk in Rainbow Grange. Uh, but I, anyone looking for a 2020 planner, I absolutely <laughs> recommend the Law of Attraction Planner by Freedom Mastery. Please read the descriptions for each planner thoroughly to make sure that you get the right planner because there are different styles. There's daily, weekly, monthly, different structures. Anyway, um, moving on. All right. Uh, are, we, are we ready to start wrapping up our day? We are ready to start wrapping it up. All right. So. So, uh, Lo, if you publish the poll, we will we'll ask people some questions. I think this is easier than uh, always doing the one on Patreon, because I know we've got people that have done that one. Yeah. But I will still link you to the Patreon poll as well. We are still taking polls. Yes, we are still doing <laughs> a poll about the Morning Metaphysical Report. We want your feedback about different aspects of it. So there's the poll that is on screen right now. Ooh. And um, would really appreciate if you fill that out. There's also a poll on our Patreon at patreon.com slash freedom dream coaching. Right there. And it's just been posted in the comments. Um, that's going to ask you what segments you would like to see added or taken away from the morning report. We'd really appreciate your feedback. So as our support and following continues to increase, uh, there are plans to expand and grow the morning report. Um, the morning report has now... So currently it's posted on Facebook, YouTube, and our Patreon, and we have just moved to Instagram. Yep. So we are expanding. Spreading the good word. And um, we, we are, are less, going... We are going less than $100 from our first goal. On Patreon. Uh, we are also going to be adding two segments uh, at certain points uh, when we hit certain goals. 
uh, which includes a kitchen with segment and a physical fitness segment for the morning reports. Um, so more and more a bit like the morning news. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this morning report, please like, follow, or subscribe to my page or channel. If you follow me on my Facebook page, um, you will also see all the other content I create. Slowly, all this will be trickling out to my YouTube and Instagram as well. Uh, I hope, I would like to encourage you guys to check out our Patreon. It tells you about us, our goals, and how you can become part of it and support us. And that is through membership. Lowest membership level is $1 a month. And each membership level, you receive perks and rewards. So, would really love to have you join us. I think that's that's all for today. I think that is all for today. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I would like to thank you all for watching the morning report, and uh, I wish you all well, and that you have a wonderful weekend. So, happy belated New Year again, and be blessed. Blessed be everybody. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs>